Uh, we're going to yeah. take a look at the, at the papers now. Uh, Tom Harwood is from the centre-right Westminster news site, Guido Fawkes, and he's here to tell us what's caught his eye. This is interesting, isn't it? Um, mm. Inside the Sun today, page two, Project No Fear. So there's going to be a, a government leaflet campaign to prepare for every home, saying why the government believes that you shouldn't panic in the end of a no-deal exit from the European Union. When you compare that to what the former Chancellor was saying literally a fortnight ago, that it would be disastrous for the country, it's very telling, isn't it? Oh, it's a total contrast. It's, in, it's a stark contrast to the leaflet that we received during the referendum in every home, saying all the dangers that are going to happen, the immediate recession, the immediate job losses that simply didn't materialise. It's kind of nice to have a government that believes a bit more positively in this country, this sort of keep calm and carry on attitude that we're going to see. And it's crucial in those negotiations to say, if we don't get something better from the EU, we're willing to walk away. And this is a much stronger government coming with that line that might well end up getting us a better deal because of it. But the keep calm and carry on sort of thing that has been endlessly parodied in so many ways and it appears on so many bits of merchandise doesn't it I mean that was originally you know fears over a, a, the Cold War fallout I mean are we sort of at that level of preparedness and worriedness about what no deal could look like that we need a leaflet telling us not to panic I don't think I, th I think that it's, it's a bit of a shame that there's quite a lot of the commentary at around Westminster trying to whip up fear about it in reality there are serious problems that could be caused by it but we've got three months to prepare to mitigate those issues and if we've got a government that's committed to doing that to, to smooth over what could be short-term bumps it's going to not be really it, it, it could be quite a positive outcome for the country because at the end of the day you get a lot of freedoms from that you can slash tariffs on day one you can move to more regulatory innovation there's lots of freedoms that are granted once you leave the clutches of, of Brussels regulation although increasing calls now for a general election so that you can ask people whether that is definitely what they want um, I think I think the last general election the Conservative Party manifesto said that we would be gunning for a deal but the only way that you can get a, a deal is by leaving no deal on the table. And no deal is better than a bad deal. And that's what people voted for last time. So it's a familiar sight. Uh, yesterday, we were, of course, well, over the weekend, we had Jeremy Corbyn in Liverpool and then Manchester. Boris Johnson was in Manchester yesterday. As soon as they put on the high vis and the hard hat, it looks like a general election campaign, doesn't it? Well, I think this is a campaigning government. This is a government that wants to do popular things. We've seen this in the poll bounce, the 10-point poll bounce that the Conservatives have had in the last few days. But this is really about attracting back the donors that abandoned the Conservative Party in the last three or four months under Theresa May and building a bit more of a movement behind Boris Johnson. They've had a campaign on social media to get people to join the Conservative Party, to build it up as a membership-based thing, as a, as a personality-driven thing, as something that people can believe in, rather than just a sort of wooden deliverance mechanism. It's something to re reignite sort of passion within the country. And I think that's quite an exciting thing. Which chunks of the electorate is he targeting? So he's targeting mainly people who voted leave in 2016, those 17.4 million people. More people than have voted for anything before in the history of the country. So if he can get a sizeable chunk of those, that's a clear path to a decisive election victory. Many of them Labour voters as well. Mm. Um, Dominic Cummings um, yes. in Downing Street. Um, so the, the main picture there, it says his first day with his Downing Street pass around his neck. But just to explain the link with the nightclub. Right, so Dominic Cummings' uncle owns a brilliant nightclub in Durham, somewhere where I, where I spent a lot of my university <laughs> years, called Clute. I've been was, there! It's amazing. It was voted the second worst nightclub in it's Europe terrible. a few years ago. But, but then the worst one burnt down. So now, by, by default, it's almost the worst nightclub in Europe, but it is brilliant. <laughs> Sticky floors and, and full to busting. But, um, but Dominic Cummings worked there in his summers, um, sometimes on the door, sometimes as a bouncer, and also as um, overseeing the redecoration of it. And uh, this piece uh, in The Express is explaining how he's going to use all of that nous that he picked up in managing that nightclub uh, and bring that to Downing Street. I think the electorate like it when people have a history, don't they, outside of Westminster? Absolutely, especially when it's something as exciting as cleats. Uh, <gasps> on top. that note, thank you. <laughs>